Good morning. I'm Jim Ray. This is the Road to the Autry Masters. Uh, we are here with Kyle Polzin, who is an exceptional uh, trump uh, uh painter uh, located in Austin, Texas, one of my favorite cities in the whole world. Welcome, Carl. Or Carl, Kyle. <laughs> thank you for uh, thank you for joining us. Sounds good, Jim. Yeah, it's good to be here. So, Kyle. Um, I, I like to start off by getting a little bit of information about how you got to where you are. So why don't you share with us a little bit about uh, your artistic upbringing, your training, how you how you got into to doing this stuff? Well, um, I grew up in a very artistic family. My dad was an artist. He on the side would uh, draw maps for oil companies, but he would design logos and things. So we always had a drawing table set up in my house. And then my grandfathers were carpenters. My grandmother was a seamstress. So a lot of kind of um, hands-on and, and, uh, and I guess a lot of artistic. I was surrounded by a lot of artistic ability. And um, so it was highly encouraged in my household. And then um, I just had a knack for it. And it became one of those things where as I was going through school and middle school, I became the kid who could draw stuff. So that be kind of helped solidify that identity for yeah. me. And then um, I, I was pretty much into art all my life. And then when I got into college, I, uh, I picked up oil painting and um, it was more of, a, more of a hobby than anything. I was mowing lawns and doing landscaping and stuff and painting in the evenings on the side. And then <clears throat> that's about the time that I met my wife, Lee. And then uh, she, with her encouragement, um, I got some work together and took it to a gallery that was pretty close by. I grew up in Victoria, Texas, which is close by the, by the Texas coast. And so the gallery that was down um, in the little beach town we would go to, uh, it was called uh, Gary Osborne Gallery. I took some work in there and the paintings I had spent the last couple, I guess more than a year painting and sold them pretty quick. And then it was all of a sudden like, what else do you have? You know? And I thought, well, I don't have much. So I went back and started working and, and that, it kind of the rest is history. It just started rolling. And um, I got into, I guess, before my my painting career really took off, I was doing some design work and graphic design, um, designing T-shirts and things like that for some local ad agencies. And then um, just made the transition into painting full time. And that's uh, pretty much how my career as a painter started. And uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, then then it just I, that little gallery got me through for a while. And then I was uh, another gallery, Southwest Gallery in Dallas, recognized my work just through another show. I think I had done um, I was invited to and and just started building from there. Yeah. So uh, you're you're in the Masters of the American West, obviously, um, mm -hmm. you've been with us for several years. You're also in the Prada West, which is a, another very highly prestigious um, exhibition. How, do, how did you get um up into that rarefied air. So the actually the Autry was the first uh, the first big museum show that I participated in, and the way that happened was um, I had painted a painting for um, Ducks Unlimited. It was something that was an invitational kind of thing, yeah. and I was already painting still life when I was doing the paintings for that little beach town. I was doing a lot of shrimp boats and um, beach paintings and landscapes, and then I started uh, doing still life somewhere in there. Um, kind of more cowboy oriented stuff. My grandfather was a cowboy. My cousin, um, you know, he uh, worked on a ranch. So I had a bunch of stuff at, at hand that I started painting some old spurs and some things like that that uh, belonged to my family. And um, I, I grew up around hunters and we, we duck hunted and we um, deer hunted. So I was always into the sporting art a little bit too. So I'd done this painting for Ducks Unlimited um, and it was, I had part of one of their yearly packages. They did prints of it or something. And um, then that's when Legacy Gallery had somehow picked up on that. They contacted me and um, through Legacy, um, I was able to put a painting in the uh, Scottsdale Art Auction for the first time. And John Garrity saw that painting. It was a big saddle painting. I thought, oh, wow, this is my first big auction piece. So I did this really big saddle painting, um, still life. And John Garrity saw that piece when he was visiting the Scottsdale Art Auction. That's how um, then I was invited to the Autry at that point. Oh, so, right. And once I was invited to the Autry, I think a couple of years passed and then I was invited to the Parita West. So it just doors just kind of seemed to open up for me. Stars aligned just right. 
Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and um, so I, I like to ask about what you're what you're working on for us. And I know that what you're working on for us is sitting right behind you there. You want to <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, about that guy? Yeah, I was so I was I had this idea. I'd, I've been trying to figure out how I was going to do it. But I've always been fascinated with Native American beadwork and um, just all that kind of stuff. So the, I'd been wanting to do a bow case and a, a bow quiver with the, with the um, tassels and all, which you can see on the painting behind me. And so I'd been doing a lot of trying to figure out how I could compose a piece with this. And so I thought I'd go more of a little more kind of a modern vibe. I feel like I, I, um, I actually, after looking at probably a hundred thousand bow cases and online and a couple of museum photos that I had, I was able to then kind of narrow it down to what I was looking for. Everything's just a little bit different. And so I, um, I actually ended up crafting the, the bow case that I'm using in the, I don't know if you can see it here, but I did all the bead work on it. Um, yeah, that's, you know, that's one uh, of the things I want to talk about. I mean, you are, yeah, you are amazing in that, uh, I don't know if you do it for all your works, but you you actually build the artifacts that you that you paint, uh, and that's it's, that's just an amazing talent. Uh, what's it's, that? It's like? one of those things. It's it's kind of my downtime, to be honest with you. If I'm not painting, I'm usually working on something. I just I I'm so fascinated with all that stuff, and a lot of times whenever I an idea sparks in my mind, I can't always put my hands right on the object that I'm looking for, or if I can find something authentic, it's doesn't always match exactly what it is that I've got in mind for the paintings. It's usually those ideas come from maybe I'll see a photo of something that just really grabs me. And then to try to, you know, that may be in a museum or in a private collection that I don't have access to, especially looking through books or photos and um, um, even going online, image searching. And um, so that's when I'll just uh, resort to trying to craft it and i enjoy doing the the whole process of it it teaches me about um the actual subject that i'm going to paint the item um i just feel like i can manipulate it and on top of that once i've got the piece finished and i compose the painting if there's something that i feel like needs to be tweaked or moved or the composition just didn't write it since it's something that i made i can actually detach something and re-sew yeah. it on or whatever like that it just lends itself to so much more um, flexibility when it comes to the composition. But at the same time, it just, I enjoy the process. It teaches me about the subject. Um, and it, it's just one of the things I enjoy doing. It's very cool. It's very cool. So, um, you know, most of your work, or at least the work that I've seen, is um, uh, primarily Western, though I've seen a little bit of baseball. I've seen a little bit of um, other kind of uh, still life. But one of the one of the more interesting pieces I know that uh, that you've done is you painted um, Willie Nelson's guitar trigger um, uh, for a for a charity auction, I guess. Um, what was mm -hmm. how, how did that all come about? I I kind of made that happen. I, I a friend of mine who is real big in the Austin music scene. Um, he's also an artist. He. Um, I knew that he had the connection somehow to Willie Nelson. So I, I told him, I said, you know, Robert, I really, if you, if you can make it happen, see if you can put me in touch with the right people. Um, I'd love to paint trigger, you know, cause that guitar is just so iconic and just has so much character. And I just thought it'd be a fun, uh, fun project. Yeah. And so sure enough, he put me in touch with Connie Nelson, Willie's ex-wife. And then right. she put me in touch with Willie and I was able to go get photos of the guitar. I had another Martin guitar that I was able to use as a stand-in, but then I was able to get all the close-up photos and everything I needed and, um, of Willie's guitar. Then I painted the piece, um, then Willie signed it afterwards, and then I varnished over his signature, and, and we ended up selling the piece. It was really a cool project. I hope you didn't yeah. cut a hole in that Martin guitar that you were using <laughs> as a sample. <laughs> no. That, that guitar is going to wind up uh in either the rock and roll hall of fame or the smithsonian or someplace i mean it's it's a, it's a legendary guitar and it's been signed by a whole host of people that have, uh, oh. that have been around willie throughout his life so sure, um, sure. so um how do you decide what you're going to do how do you decide uh that this is something that i want to turn into uh, a work of my art so that for instance the the bow case that I'm painting right now I I wanted to that was that was the first thing that caught my attention 
But then in order to kind of fill out the composition and help it tell a story, I thought what I would do is include maybe an old ledger drawing in the piece, which you can kind of see it's it's um, it's the larger, larger piece back here is going right. to be a ledger drawing. I just have it blocked in. And then there's just a little photo of a Native American with a headdress that that um, that I'm going to use just to kind of help help uh, tell the whole story. It's just, you know, it's just some I um, some items that all kind of relate that go together and kind of make the composition and i thought i'd call it relics of a nation is what the title is oh, going to be cool but um yeah and so the ledger drawing is um i've found several different ledger pieces that i liked a lot uh, i think a lot of them were by red red hawk i believe and i'll probably make some changes there just to make them so they're original to you know just so that i'm not just painting painting the the ledger exactly but i'll use some some pieces here and there and and um, kind of make my own design out of it. But the, the inspiration and all is all coming off of authentic pieces that I've seen. And, and um, Great. But the, going back to what kind of inspires it is it's just really whatever just strikes my interest and it, whatever, um, whatever I'm into at that moment, especially, you know, if I see the, see, um, like I saw these photos, it's bow case. And that, that's been kind of ginning in my mind for a while. And then I finally figured out how I wanted to, to um, compose the piece and actually the way it's all hanging on the back of an old blanket which is um trade cloth and the the little you can see the little, the little um the old trade cloth had kind of a dyed edge right where the the way it was dyed i i guess the um uh, it has a real trademark look if you look at the old um blankets and uh cloth from that the wool trade cloth had a had a really pattern and it's like it's stitched together and then they would maybe make a blanket out of it and so that's yeah. the background for the piece Cool. It's very cool. So over the years, um, has your has your process pretty much stayed the chain has stayed the same as it evolved? Uh, uh, how does that part work? Well, it's I've been doing primarily still life probably for the last fifteen years, and so the my process has changed. Some I mean I, I take it back. My process really hasn't changed, but the but maybe trying to add more ambiance to the to the atmosphere in the painting and things like that are some some ways that i've evolved i've tried to sharpen places that i want your eye to see and be a little looser in places that you're that are more secondary in the painting um but honestly after what i it's funny you asked me that because this this year um lee and i have decided just to kind of pull back just a little bit because i feel like when you're um, being part of these museum shows and the, and kind of a um, the I guess more than anything it's the deadlines will just kind of yeah. keep you going which you need that little fire always but what happens is you're always kind of falling back to that place where you're comfortable as opposed to stretching yourself a little bit because that takes you know you're going to have some failures there and when you've got a deadline you're up against you can't always take those kind of risks so this year, I'm going to try and slow down just a little bit, just so I can explore a little more, not necessarily in the subject, but just my compositions, um, test some new things out. And, and some may be good, some may not, but it's just some some um, things I want to try. But in order to do that, you've got to you've got to put the brakes on just a little bit because, you know, once, um, like I said, I've been fortunate for the last several years that things have been moving pretty steadily and um but in order to kind of keep that flow going, you just kind of have to always be in that comfortable zone. And it's hard to evolve a lot. I mean, you have these, you can look back over the last 10 years and see an evolution in my work, but it's been very gradual. And yeah. so this time I'd like to just, just to keep things creative for myself, just kind of push the boundaries a little more. And that's going to take taking those risks a little bit. I, I, I'm anxiously awaiting what, what comes from that process and Failure and Kyle Polson are not words that tend to come together. I mean, you won you won the Prix de West Award this uh, this last year at uh, at the the Prix de West in Oklahoma City. You've had a couple of hugely successful um, uh, shows and auctions at uh, Legacy Gallery. Uh, you you are a legendary painter, and and people really actively aggressively go after after your work and someday maybe i'll be fortunate enough <laughs> to be able to acquire one haven't haven't succeeded in that yet but uh, anyway uh well thank you so much um uh kyle for for spending a little bit of time with us and and sharing your thoughts on these subjects 
um, you you're going to be on one of our panel discussions at the uh, at the Masters Show in February, and we look forward to seeing you and Lee then. And um, uh, thanks again for joining us. Yeah, you got it, Jim. It's been fun. Great.